Hey everybody, welcome back to the Switch 2 Week Dive where we take a look at the most interesting games coming out in the next two weeks. In this case, in August, because we happen to be in August. We're just gonna go to the end of August because I'm kind of recording this on a weird day. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into your Switch games. Now, our first game today is called Helheim Hassle. Now, imagine this. You're a Viking in the Viking Age. You don't want to die. You don't want to go to Valhalla, but that's exactly what happens. And now, to appease the gods, you have to uh, solve increasingly difficult puzzles by dismembering your own body parts and throwing them around the stage. I'm not really sure why or, or where or the how of it, but basically that's it. You just dismember yourself and solve, you know. They're trying to do a neat take on, you know, the standard puzzle game by taking a really, really macabre and gruesome look at puzzle games. And I don't, I don't know what it has to do with Vikings, but whatever. Anyway, you're going to have 90 puzzles, 14 levels, 80 plus interactable characters, and a, sure a story to tell once you're done with this game. Next up after that, we have a game called My Universe, My Baby, in which you in which you take care of a small infant. Now, I'm not certain which of you out there wanted this game, but someone, I guess, thought it would be a great idea to teach people what it's like to have to care for a small infant. Now, now I'm very sad that this game isn't in VR, because the first thing I would want to do is just try to shake a baby. For my older viewers out there, this is basically like a real-life Tamagotchi, except for the real-life part. Uh, but it's not nearly as fun as a Tamagotchi because you don't, you know, get to carry it around with your pocket size. This is actually an infant child which you have to bathe and feed and clothe and, and do all the crap that I don't know why anyone would make a game about this. Speaking of simulation games that literally no one in their right mind would ever play or want is a game called Chinese Parents in which you grow up under... I assume, Chinese parents, and you have to manage your study time, your, your, your math. You have to, you have to study. You have to set aside time to uh, probably clean your room and, and scheduling those important events. You can also play some Bejeweled, I guess, in the middle of it. If that's, I guess that's like a ch uh, Chinese parent thing, I guess. I don't know. Come on, guys. We got to do better than this. We can, we can make better games than this. All right, next up after that is a game specifically for one person out there in my audience. Her name is Brittany. This is called Kids Farm Coloring. This is a game in which you have a farm, you have all these animals, and then you just color all the animals. It's a coloring game for children. I believe it's right up your alley. For anyone else, you probably just want to pass this one along, unless you really like farm animals and or coloring, or perhaps a combination of the both, in which case, uh, this game was made specifically for you. Congratulations. After that, we have a game called Kwai Don. Asuma Manor Story, which appears to me to be a throwback to PS1 era horror games, a la Fatal Frame, uh, and really that was that was the extent of my knowledge of PS1 era horror games, so we're just gonna go with, oh, also Resident Evil. The, the original Resident Evil games kinda had this. Anyway, you play a girl who's trying to save the manor from all of the, the devious and devious and evil spirits and other monsters that are on the, the manor. You don't have guns, but you have, you know, Japanese guns, which are like a Naganata, like a ninja sword, probably maybe a lightsaber or something. And you move through the manor and you have to kill all these monsters and you can play either classic uh, throwback 2000s tank controls or the more modern analog controls if you desired. That's gonna run you $22, which is a little bit expensive looking for a game that doesn't look very good, frankly, but I thought that someone out there might wanna know that this game exists. Next up is a throwback again to like early 2000s era graphics. Look at this photo. This photo does not scream, wow, I really have nostalgia for old timey graphics. This photo to me kind of says, please kill me. The game describes itself as a first person horror narrative, scary suspense adventure in which each area is gonna be wildly different. For example, one area you might be caught smuggling VHS tapes across the border and now uh, you might have to murder a man in the back room of a shady diner. Things like that are very different, and that is why they call it a fever dream. I don't understand it, but it's a very strange game. Next up, we have additional garbage games for children if you're into coloring and things that don't actually have any fun in them whatsoever. We have one line coloring. It's where you connect dots to color shapes and make animals and other various things in the game. So again, if you're that one person in my audience that likes games that have literally no substance and all you do is color, congratulations, one line coloring is gonna be coming out next week. After that, we have a nostalgia trip for any of you who used to watch the old Cartoon Network. We have Samurai Jack's Battle Through Time. Now, normally I wouldn't include a game like this, but I know there's so many people that are such rabid, crazy fans for Samurai Jack 
that it, I would be remiss, honestly, if I didn't include this in there. I don't know how much uniqueness or enjoyment that most people who don't follow Samurai Jack are gonna get out of this, and it's gonna run you a pretty penny. It's definitely on the more expensive side, but for those people who are fans of the classic cartoon, I do think there's gonna be a lot here in which you could have that, you know, trip down memory lane kind of experience. And so definitely don't miss out on that if you were a fan of the original cartoons. And they do explicitly say on their page that it is voiced by the original voice actor. So that may be another reason why any fans of the Samurai Jack series are gonna pick this one up. After that, we have a game called Giraffe and Annika, which as far as I can tell is a game about a cat girl that wanders around an island for some reason. The Nintendo Store page describing this game has exactly two sentences and nothing else. They have some screenshots, but all the screenshots show is a cat girl wandering around a vacant island. So I'm not even sure what you do here. But let, you know, just for sake of completeness, I guess I'll read you the entire summary. After waking from a strange dream, Annika finds herself surrounded on an island of Spica, having no recollection of her past. Sentence one. Sentence two. With the help of a boy named Giraffe, for some reason, and a witch Lily, she must find three special star fragments on the island in order to uncover her memories. So apparently you wander an island looking for like special glasses or crystals or something because you have amnesia and you have no idea how you got there. I don't know, man. But if you like cat girls and islands, this could be that's a very diverse group of things, but maybe that's your bag. Next up, we have a bizarre and interesting title that caught my attention called No Straight Roads. Now this is gonna be an odd blend of platformer, action, hack and slash, rhythm, and a bunch of other strange party game-esque titles all into one game about a city that is all caught up in EDM music and you are trying to bring rock and roll to the forefront again and celebrate like true rock and roll heroes. I have no idea, but watching the gameplay of this game, it is so unique and so different that I can't help but recommend that everyone at least takes a look at it. It's just bizarre. And they're finally, like this is one of those games where they did not copy paste from any other game that I can think of. It's just a weird blend of a ton of different genres in a great, colorful, cartoony, insane fashion. I just highly recommend at least you keep this one on your radar if you're into those interesting, odd titles. Next up after that, we have a game called Windbound. Now this is possibly my favorite kind of genre, survival strategy. You basically get shipwrecked on an island, blah, blah, blah. You've heard this before, blah, blah, blah. Trees cutting down, blah, blah, blah. Tools, blah, blah, blah. Shelter, blah, blah, blah. Find other islands, survive. But it's on the Switch. Now I don't think that there are many games on the Switch that have come out using this same formula. On PC, you know, we have a million of them. You can play Rust, you can play Seven Days to Die, you can play other games that do that same, look, there's a thousand, Raft, go play that or, or whatever. Uh, anyway, on the Switch, this is fairly unique. They take a more cartoonish approach and instead of being on one main continent or one main area, you actually travel in between islands to go forage, uh, to go build and, and, and gather things. And so that is actually a more unique take if you've ever played what, uh, Island of Mara, that's I guess slightly similar, but a more farming take to me, this seems most like a game for PC called Wildlands. I don't know if you've ever heard of it by Bohemia Interactive. It was a game similar where each island was kind of its own biome and you had to boat, you had to ship your way, you know, boat across the ocean to these other islands to find different types of resources. So one island may be volcanic and have, you know, magma stuff and another island may be all trees, you know, it's very jungly. So this may in fact be a really fun game. I don't know much about it other than, again, craft, survive, build, live, just enjoy. All right, listen up. Do you fucking love anime? Like, do you live and breathe anime? Well, check this out. Our next title is called Jump Force Deluxe Edition, not the basic ass edition. This is deluxe, okay? They're gonna have, check this out. Listen, listen to what you get. Listen to this. They are giving you in the deluxe edition, the game. And also the characters pass nine additional characters, deluxe. Okay, this is this is just you really like anime. You you pick a bunch of Shonen Jump characters from JoJo to My Hero Academia to Dragon Ball Z to whatever and blah 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 fight. You really like anime? If so, you'll probably buy this. It's crazy expensive. It's gonna be all these games normally retail for sixty dollars or more, depending on uh, you know how anime they are. This last one I am so excited about. Our last game is called The Road. 
to Guangdong. Guangdong may actually be one word. I'm not really sure. In the title screen, it kind of looks like two, but in the title, uh, just below, it looks like kind of... Anyway, point is, you, in the 90s, early China, inherit family's restaurant. Hey, congratulations to you. Problem is, probably heard this before, it's kind of run down. You got to fix it up. So, check this out. Road trip across China. Meet up with other family members. Figure out the secret to restoring the family's restaurant to its once former glory. Drive your car around China. Meet relatives. Fix restaurant. Pretty sure those are the three main tenants of the game. Uh, a lot of this game apparently is driving your car around Guangdong. Guang, Guangdong. Guang, the city. It's a city in China. A little bit on the expensive side, but could be fun. Anyway, there you go. Road to Guangdong. So that's it. There are your interesting games. Those are the bet, the most interesting and the best games for the next two weeks. Now listen, I, there's a lot of stuff coming out on the Nintendo eShop. There's at least right now 40 games that are coming out between now and the end of August. And that's just in the next, you know, two weeks plus like a couple of days, whatever. But the point is they're releasing so many indie titles of such a wide scope. There has never been a better time to own a Switch. They are porting everything from Steam, all these little indie titles over to the Switch and they just continually and continually do this. And so listen, you can find something for you that you will enjoy. There has, again, never been a better time to own a Switch. There's so much content on it. And a lot of these little indie titles, you can pick up for five, six, and seven dollars. They're just great. And so instead of buying that $60, that $70 new Call of Duty, why don't you try something new and different, a little indie title, you know, on the Nintendo store. Or if you're on Steam, most of these indie games also release on Steam years ago. And again, they're just porting them. So don't feel like even though you don't have a Switch, you can't play these. I guarantee you most of these probably on the Steam store. Anyway, that's it. We're gonna wrap up there. Those were your two week dive Steam games. Hopefully you found some or all of those interesting. And if so, you know, watch out for them. The dates were in the video, so you know exactly where they're gonna, when they're gonna come out. I'll have links below, so you can go check out the individual titles if you want. If you'd like to see something in a different format, if something doesn't work out for you, if if you feel like, hey, I'd really like to know these facts, let me know in the comments. I can do those next time when I release another one of these in about two weeks or two months, depending on my schedule and how uh, beat I'm feeling. Didn't really release these on like a nice cadence, but I'm trying to get better about it. It's just hard, you know, when real life happens. Gets in the way, I should say. Anyway, until next time, burn bright, everybody. Thank you.